These moments had us on the edge of our seats. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Line of Duty moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be going over the best and most memorable moments from the Internal Affairs Police television show, Line of Duty, at least as of Series 5. Number 10. Am I still a police officer? Why are you backing me, sir? I am, but AC-12's findings extend further to your husband's solicitor and you. Each series of Line of Duty usually focuses on a single crooked copper, while also progressing the ongoing storyline. Series 4's focus is DCI Ros Huntley, who commits several miscarriages of justice as well as manslaughter against a colleague, which she covers up by framing her husband. Not only do we have the murderer's DNA, but we have the exact strain of bacteria detected on Tim that was grown from the wound that he inflicted on his killer. Now, do you have anything to say now, DCI Huntley? As great as seeing her taken down in the final interview is, what's even more satisfying is that, after her crimes are laid bare, Huntley arrests her own lawyer, who is connected to the organized crime group AC-12 has been investigating, getting one last chance to be a police officer. James Lakewell, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you fail to mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Number 9. Huntley's Hospital Surprise It's starting to stink, you know, that thing on your wrist. That thing is just a graze. And it's fine. While we're on the subject of Roz Huntley, her aforementioned manslaughter leaves her with a wound on her wrist that gradually becomes infected over the course of the series. Eventually, her wound begins to smell, and her husband takes notice. Lying bitch. This culminates when DCI Huntley faints and she is rushed to the hospital. Forced to make a decision for her while she's unconscious, her husband opts for them to amputate her hand to save her life, leaving Roz understandably shocked when she awakens to find that her hand is missing. There's no choice. Huh. Quite the cost for her misdeeds. Number 8. Danny Waldron's team turns on him. What are you talking about? He would have surrendered if you'd have got her in time. That's my report unless a lot of you man up right now. While pursuing suspect Ronan Murphy, Sergeant Danny Waldron shoots the man in cold blood after he surrenders, eventually bullying the rest of his response team into helping him cover it up. The suspect turned his weapon on us and opened fire. I returned fire. The suspect fell to the ground. He then proves unflappable in AC-12's interview room and follows it up with another murder. The stage is set for Sergeant Waldron to be the focus of Series 3, and he is, just not in the way the audience expects. We're going up. Call it in, Channel 1. Into Charlie 55 on 1. While on another call, Waldron's team calls him upstairs and gunshots fire, leaving Waldron dead and surrounded by his teammates with one or more of them having apparently killed him after the pressure he put them under. Line of Duty always keeps the audience on its toes, and this completely subverted our expectations. Number 7. John Corbett Exposed Like it or not, this is what we do. Do you? Do I what? Like it? Series 5 focuses on John Corbett, an undercover police officer AC-12 suspects of going rogue. However, Corbett maintains that he's working to discover the identities of police officers with ties to organized crime from the inside. While transporting women as part of their human trafficking ring, Corbett snaps when he hears the women apparently being assaulted, holding the criminals at gunpoint and attempting to rescue the women. I'm gonna let the girls go. What you talking about? Then the girls? They're livestock. We're here to make a trade. However, it's revealed to have been play-acting to goad Corbett into revealing himself and his throat is cut. The fact Corbett bleeding to death is shown along with his wife reading to their children makes this an especially tragic death. 
Number six, Steve goes down the stairs. Mr. Huntley, unable to confirm wife's whereabouts on the 17th slash 18th. No, I didn't say that. Mr. Huntley denies the above. While trying to establish Ros Huntley's whereabouts at the time of her colleague's suspicious death, Steve Arnott begins looking at her husband, Nick. When Nick's own story proves to have holes, Steve goes to Nick's office to confront him, prompting Nick to call his and Roz's aforementioned lawyer. If they're calling her, where were you? I'm thinking you weren't where you said you were. Mr. Huntley? Think about your answer. You got one minute. I'm on the way up. As Steve goes into the building, AC-12 tries to warn Steve off, as Nick's car, the night of the death, now makes him a potential suspect. When Steve gets out of the elevator, he is confronted by a man in a balaclava, just like that of the suspect in a string of recent killings. After a struggle, Steve is thrown down the stairs, which left us all gasping at the prospect that he might be dead. Number five, Huntley wakes up. Tim, email me your concerns. I know my place. Tim, I will read them, absolutely. In the premiere of series four, Ros Huntley's colleague, Timothy Ifield, raises concerns with AC-12 that Huntley is ignoring evidence that would exonerate an innocent man. When Huntley confronts Ifield at his house, an argument ensues, and a shove from Roz leads Tim to hurt his hand, prompting him to retaliate. When she threatens to bring him up on charges for assaulting a police officer, he tries to get her to stay, and causes her to hit her head, apparently killing her. After buying supplies to clean up her body, and just as he's prepared to start dismembering her, her eyes open. Plenty of Line of Duty's most shocking moments have to do with surprise deaths, but this resurrection floored us. Number four, Dot and Denton take a drive. Disgraced former DI Lindsay Denton may have taken a bribe and been an accessory to murder, but she still wants to catch the people who caused her fall from grace. To that end, she manages to find a list left behind by Danny Waldron of people linked to child sex abuse. Lindsay Denton, I'm arresting you on suspicion of impersonating a police officer. Unfortunately, immediately afterwards, she is picked up in a car by D.I. Matthew Dot Cotton, who is, unbeknownst to her, the AC-12 mole known as the Caddy. How do you know that? 50 grand the first time. 100 grand this time. During the course of their drive, Denton realizes who Dot is when he offers her another bribe. As Dot threatens to kill her, she sends off the list to AC-12, prompting Dot to murder her and making this complex character's final act a heroic one. Number three, out the window. Meet your new partner. Actually, sir, it's Georgia. After a conflict of interest forces Kate Fleming to recuse herself from the investigation into Denton, Georgia Trotman is brought on as Steve's new partner. The two of them hit it off, and their relationship turns physical after a night of drinking, making a nice contrast with the friendship dynamic between Kate and Steve. Where's the guard? When Georgia and Steve are called to a hospital to protect a witness, the two of them are ambushed. <laughs> Steve is knocked out, and Georgia is overpowered and thrown from the window, bringing a shocking and abrupt end to a promising new character. Number two, late night callers. No one else would believe me. DCI Tony Gates is the subject of Series 1's investigation. Not only is the decorated officer padding his arrest numbers, but his mistress, Jackie Laverty, has managed to involve him in covering up a murder. Although initially angry with her, Laverty manages to convince Gates that it's in his best interest to not arrest her, as he's already being investigated and she can play the victim. No! No! Tony! While enjoying some wine back at her place, 
a knock on the door reveals several masked men, who rough up Gates and then slit Laverty's throat in front of him, planting his fingerprints on the murder weapon. In only its second episode, Line of Duty manages to deliver one of its most jaw-dropping and effective cliffhangers. Number 1. Urgent Exit Required Killing Lindsay Denton is not without its consequences, as Dot soon finds out. As satisfying as the interrogation that lays bare all his lies is, this moment is even more memorable. Maybe I could just yeah. check the calendar. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have entered my flat, would you, Kate? Under the pretext of checking his calendar, Dot sends the text urgent exit required to an armed policeman standing guard outside the room, who guns down his fellow guard and shoots the glass, giving Dot a quick way out. The ensuing chase is harrowing as well, and the fact it sees the end to the treacherous caddy helps make it the best line of duty moment so far. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.